According to the laws of physics, everything that occupies space is matter. But when you're serving a life sentence, it feels like you defy physics. You occupy a cell, but no matter to society. Framed for your worst moment, you're left out of the conversations about solutions to mass incarceration. The system continues its removal of individuals without addressing the root cause of crime. Generation after generation face the same systematic issues, landing father and son in the same prison cell. I'm standing in an old school phone booth with a push button phone and the front door is missing. There's no front door. Not far from me is the uh, CO's podium. About five officers there chilling. I'm in San Quentin State Prison in San Quentin, California. One day I'm in my cell the whole day, and the other day I get off for 90 minutes. And so um, I, a lot of my time is waiting for that 90 minutes. <laughs> but in the meantime, uh, I get up about 5 a.m., I cut on my TV, turn, turn to the news, and then uh, I try to do some light like, curls, uh, just basically work out. At about 6.15, I pray, I'm, I'm Muslim. I roll my mattress back, and I start writing. Uh, whatever, I got make a checklist of things or priority, things I want to work on. Some of it is answering letters. Some of it is writing articles and op-eds. Sometimes I'm working on a book. I just finished my last course to get an associate's degree from college, but I also took a sign up for another class to try to work towards a bachelor's. In freelance write. I'm a contributor writer for the Monster Project and San Quentin News. I uh, am an advocate uh, for voting rights for incarcerated people, as well as uh, laws that just make more sense, period, when dealing with the justice system or the criminal system. The reason why I say policing is flawed is because they seek to solve a crime after somebody's dead instead of seeking to stop crime before it ever happens. And when I heard him talk about, like, uh, one way to stop mass incarceration and improve our criminal system is to get proximate to the problem. And I realized that me being proximate to the problem gave me a lot of insight. It gave me a lot of direction on, on the right solutions. Uh, he came up with the idea, and uh, he just wanted the way to like use proximity in art to like uh, make a difference. I think that we misunderstand. What, is, what it means to be in prison and what's possible for people who are in prison. We, me and my uh, co-founders, Rasan and, and Juan Meza, we founded Prison Renaissance because we were in prison and we were in San Quentin State Prison, which is what they call the rehabilitation flagship of, in, of California. There's like a lot of things wrong with that description. One of the things that we had pinpointed, we had a lot of prison programs um, but none of them were run by incarcerated people. How can we build a model that shows how you can serve incarcerated people without needing the approval of a prison administration? So we build our programs a lot around protected activities like First Amendment rights, hence arts and like writing and journalism. First of all, let me just be honest. I don't know how to curate anything. This, I just fumble into this position and just use my untrained eye, like, like just really decide what's beautiful. And that's all art is, if you ask me. It's all about what's beautiful. So art as a way of building proximity, because I think art is beautiful, even when it's describing something ugly, it's still beautiful. And it just shows the humanity of, of, of people, period. But I've long been a fan of several artists here, Stan Bay, uh, Bruce Fowler, and every artist I asked pretty much said, yes, I'm in.
and he just trusted me and just gave me the artwork, donated it to the Prison Renaissance, which is full faith that I would make something miraculous happen, and it went down pretty well. These artists are saying, like, I want to be seen. Like, I want to be seen as an artist and not just like an incarcerated artist. Are, are you really acknowledging an artist or, or are you here for a spectacle? I'm an artist. I'm a real live artist. I'm not uh, a prison painter. I'm a painter who's in prison. We are taking incarcerated people's art. We're making sure they still own it and we are paying them for it. We sold four paintings and one went for $1,100 and uh, Eighty-five percent of that went to the artists. Uh, we hope that they can earn an uh, income while in prison, so that when they come home, they already have a resume with a, with a CV with a bunch of like listings of stuff they've done while incarcerated. They have community connections with people who work in their field. It's easier, a lot easier, to do the right thing when you have more opportunities and obstacles. And even though you should do the right thing no matter what, and you're always accountable for your actions. It's just a lot harder to do the right thing when you have more obstacles in your life than opportunities. When I say incarcerated person, what do you think? You don't think of father, you don't think of artist, you don't think attorney. The way that we do not actually see incarcerated people, we just see their struggle, we just see like systemic racism, or we just see the worst thing they've ever done, that is to get engaged the mythology of an incarcerated person. And that is not a real person. So there is no strategy that you can devise to help that person because you've yet to see the person. I'm particularly hard on myself because even though you have to be exceptional to make it out of Brownsville, I am exceptional. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it from prison, right? All this great stuff, and I could have been doing it then. Uh, so I let my emotions supersede my intelligence. And so I think about, like, how I could have been part of the solution so much longer ago. Um, so I really just, like, want to be a voice of reason and just try to make the world make sense. I got to tell Rasan this all the time, like, Rasan is the most honorable man I know. You gotta think about this. I've been in prison since I was 18. Everything I know, everything I learned, I learned from someone in prison. My compassion, my intelligence, my politics, my drive to serve my community. Someone in prison, someone who you would dismiss as a violent felon taught me that. These men saved my life. I feel like I'm really needed out there. I know I deserve a lot for my criminal lifestyle, but I'm not that person anymore, and I still need it. My mom's older now, and it would be great if I was there to take care of her, and I'm not. I'm hurting people by being in here. Before, I was hurting people being out there, but now it's the other way around. My youngest son, I feel like he needs my guidance. He needs, we need to build a better relationship so I can guide him the right way. I just got so much to offer society. Like, I know my debt could never be paid, but I feel like I could do a better job paying it on the outside. You know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't have to, taxpayers should be paying for my dinner tonight. <laughs> I should be buying you guys dinner.